With a driver's seat in the SEC East on the line and the path to Atlanta as the SEC East champions being pretty clear for either Georgia or Missouri, we thought that instead of an additional review of Georgia-Florida, we need to scout these Missouri Tigers, let you know what they are doing, what's coming into Athens. So that we're going to do that with offense and defense. Brent, Missouri, this is a team that I thought coming into the season, Drinkwitz may not survive the season, and they've completely turned around. They've built up a lot of support up there. Missouri's become a tough place to play at this season. Uh, could have lost to Kansas State, took a really long field goal, which they have a great field goal kicker. That a shootout with LSU that they ended up losing. Tough to, to win a game against LSU when you start getting into to, to the 40s. Overall, though, Missouri's taking care of business this season, and that's why I think that – at least I'm surprised that they come into Athens with an opportunity to end one of the longest winning streaks in the history of college football. Couldn't the Missouri Tigers do this? Let's let's talk about what we're going to see here, offense and defense. Yeah, and it's, they have players. I think I think that's the biggest thing is when, when you look at what Georgia has faced this season. This might be the most. It's likely the most talented roster they'll have faced, and the best player on the field might might be on Missouri's side, uh, potentially. I, I mean, there's an argument for that. Offensively, for sure. Offensively. But, you know, the other part is, like, the confidence with which they're playing. They had a bye week. They almost beat Georgia a season ago. Like, there, there's there's not going to be a, like, they want this game kind of thing. Now, the Vegas line came out. There's, there's, there's a whole lot of data that suggests, and, and you look at some score comparisons and things like that, and you're like, are they really that like? Are they really a seven and one sort of dominant version team? I, I the biggest thing for me when watching them is what they do scheme wise can hurt some of the things, especially or both offensively and defensively. We're going to highlight those things. It's just it's stuff that traditionally hurts Georgia in some way where there's going to be chunk play a chunk play here and there. It's just can't the key for me with anything over the next three weeks with Missouri, Ole Miss, and then Tennessee, is that can the opponent do it for four quarters? Yeah. That's – that's I don't – I question that big time. But if – in terms of the offensive firepower, these next two is real. We're presented by ESW Distillery, Brady Pest Management. We'll tell you about them at the end of the show here. Bringing up the video, Brent, and, and just some names that if you haven't watched a lot of Missouri, you need to know Brady Cook, quarterback, he's back – third leading passer in the SEC with uh, 2,200 yards. And Cody Strader running back, he's soon to be the top rusher in the league, I believe. And then Luther Burden just behind the league neighbors. But I, I think Luther Burden, second best wide receiver in the country behind Marvin Harrison Jr. And we're about to show you why. Yeah, and he's number two sort of overall in terms of wide receiver grade, PFF grade, behind neighbors. Uh, he's up there at the slot, and he's going to get this ball where he just went. He can win and win quickly. And – the yak almost nine yards after the catch per reception. He's just really good, and they find ways to get in the ball. He's great in space. Now he's majority in the slot. So hello, Tyke Smith. But they move him around enough. They use motion very well. Like we highlighted within the Florida video, some of the things that they did with Trey Wilson. You're going to see the same exact things with Luther Burden. Uh, but again, it's in terms of just sheer ability, there's a reason he was a top 10 national recruit, and there's a reason that Georgia wanted him really bad. I wanted him very badly. Let's talk about the growth we've seen from Brady Cook. Like, this is an absolute perfect throw, and it's Weiss's. So, in terms of receiving trios, Theo Weiss, number one outside guy, this is his only drop on the season, and he obviously missed this one. But, like, the key here is Cook. Cook has played. You know, infinitely better uh, this season and made like in terms of like, three out of the last four games, he's had at least four big time throws, like the highest grade of throws. He's stepping up his play each and every week. Now, it, are there negative things? And by the way, are we saying Missouri is like world beaters and they're going to come in here and just dominate? No, but we're pointing out stuff that those who don't watch Missouri often, you're going to be like, oh, wait, their quarterback can drop it on a dime and throw the ball deep and make great throws. Yes, their quarterback can definitely do that. 
I think the best way to say it, this is the most complete offense that Georgia has played to this point in the season. If yep. you have championship dreams ahead of you, which Georgia does, you're likely going to play better offenses than this as well. But if you're not on your A game or you're at home, so maybe it's your high B game, Missouri can scare you a little bit is what we're saying. Yeah, and I think, like I said, I think this is the best trio. If you All three, sort of composite of the three what receivers that they're going to see. And in this game against LSU, early lead, LSU had to really play well, crawl yeah. back into this and score. Had to get a, turn, a couple of turnovers and, a, and a stop, one once kind of stopped, true stop, one or two true stops late. And then Missouri just couldn't stop them. Man, if Missouri would have won that, you would have had a ball game here in Athens. Much like we talk about with Trey Wilson in the back. Hey, when, when three is in the backfield and it's there for a reason, they, they find ways to get in the ball. I mean, He's almost up at the he's I think he's a little over nine hundred yards receiving and look at the like the after the catch ability is real. Like it just is. Because By the way, that's that's catch. Luther Burton again. Woo. Oh, yep, a little Berman. And yeah. then get north south, make plays. He's just a really good player. And you know, like he looks like a prototype NFL guy to me. Yes. And I'm, and that's who the NFL's best receivers are now. It's the Six foot, six one, hundred and ninety pound guys that can, that are just super quick and great with the ball in their hands. Is there a comp that comes to the top of your head? Like, I almost want to say something like a Jamar Chase, but like, no, Chase is more physical, yeah, and plays more so on the outside. I think it's more like if you look at college type stuff, it's more Justin Jefferson because Jefferson played in the slot, yeah, and he he's kind of elevated himself as he's gotten to the pros. But in terms of their production from the slot, that was it's more been sort of Jefferson like. I was hoping you'd say Lad McConkey. I mean, it, it is up there, yes. Lad <laughs> does a little bit of everything, though. Let's talk about run game a little bit for Missouri. Schrader's tough to tackle. I mean, you saw that a season ago uh, for Georgia, but he's very patient. And, and their scheme, like here you got split zone plus jet fake. Like it creates eyes, creates false – sort of makes you be very eye disciplined. False steps can hurt you. And also from a run blocking, like the left tackle was one of the highest graded uh, run blockers in the SEC. I think if not the highest and their team as a whole, their run block grade is the fourth highest in the power five. Mm -hmm. So, like, and a lot of that I think is scheme dependent and obviously some of the competition that they played, but their offensive line isn't bad is what I'm saying. Yeah. And he, he's patient. He plays low to the ground. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to be breaking off 70-yard runs from Georgia. Georgia will no. be able to catch him. He's not a burner, but he can he can punish you. Yep. He's downhill. He kind of goes one direction. Um, good player. Again, he's about to be – we talked about Ray Davis at Kentucky and, and all the things he can do. This guy's about to be leading the league in rushing yards. Yep. Third and nine here, going empty, Brady Cook. He can run. He will run. And, and the other part, like, you know, you talk about Mertz and, and what Georgia was facing against Florida. Mertz was a statue. Mertz had, like, negative yards on design runs. Cook has well over 100 yards on design runs already, so they will incorporate him into some of their split zone action and just have him keep and come around. Like, he's not a statue. He will run. He will break the pocket. So the, your rush has to be a combination of discipline uh, and also trying to beat guys because – here, third and nine, they play man. They get out of their lanes uh, within the rush. They jump inside, boom, left tackle handles it, and you give a guy an easy first down. He can run better than Peyton Thorne, I'll tell you that. Yes. And Peyton Thorne had a run on Georgia. Yes. So, that's all I'm saying. Finally, let's get one more offensive play in here. Pretty big run. This is just tough to defend. And – it's the outside zone stretch play, old school like Denver Broncos, you know Alex Gibbs type stuff, and this is what you know. In terms, of, I think Schrader had the big run against Georgia a season ago on a very sort of similar play, and it's the one cut style where it allows the running back to see if you don't get penetration, if you don't stay very disciplined from a from a gap standpoint, you get one little overflow, and then they push you, and then it's cut and go. And he makes people miss. So it's just it, the, that scheme to me is, is is very difficult to to defend, and especially if you do it and you do it well. 
Let's just quickly wrap up with talking about. Oh, darn! That's just on offense. We yes, that's the offense. Things to go through. Yes. Excuse me. I was sitting here about to to wrap and talk about the offense. We can talk about the offense. Um, yeah. Three Let's... really good. QB can run, will run. Running back, run blocking. It's good. It's a it's a scheme that has given you problems over the over the, over the years a little bit. So it's it's going to be a tough task, and I think Georgia's obviously going to be prepared. They're obviously going to bring it but it, it's this is one where i'm like okay if there's a team to me that can that truly can score with georgia this might be the one uh-huh. Uh-huh. defensively pressure hello here come they the bring players. they bring it they brought it last year i wrote about it i wrote, it was one of the things that after watching this game i thought more teams would copy a lot of what missouri did to georgia because in a lot of third down situations this is what they did to Georgia, man across, man everywhere, and just bring the house. Cover zero, cover one, the combination. They're only Arkansas, who's just hired like the most hyper aggressive coordinator in college football, is is more. So they're going to bring it, and it's not a lot of stunts like Georgia runs the you know tackle in twists and things like that. This is just bring extra guys, especially defensive backs. And by the way, the guy making the play on neighbors right there, Abrams Drain. One of the highest graded quarter, corners in, in the country. I, I think his completion percentage allowed is in the 30s. He, he can play and he's made, you know, a bunch of plays on the football. This just elevates the intensity on so many things on a play. It, it makes the quarterback have to make a quick decision. That's usually not an issue for Carson Beck. It makes offensive line. And then if you have tight ends or running backs helping, makes them have the correct reads. Otherwise, it, it rushes the quarterback. I think the biggest thing that George is going to need from this receivers winning in one-on-one mm-hmm. make a play out there, go catch the ball. Carson Beck's putting it in good spots. So I think, I think this game is the one where you're about to find out what Georgia's skill players have, because they're going to have maybe more opportunities than they have had most of the year. Yeah. And uh, the interesting part will be how much can Missouri keep, get Georgia two third down? Uh, because I think from a run defense standpoint, it's not their strength. Their strength is more getting after the quarterback, but they have players, they have athletes, they have a sort of SEC caliber defensive line, uh, especially on the edge. And it, it's in terms of explosive run play percentage allowed, they're one of the worst in the SEC. So like there's, there's plays to be had, but if they get you in this world, guess what? They're bringing the house. They're right. coming after you. Well, sometimes that aggressive aggressiveness gets punished if you can yes. get behind it. hundred yeah. percent. We'll see that some as well. Here's a first and 15 and, Again, Just you get win, some, quick yeah, wins win. along the defensive line, and then seven making plays on the ball. Forced interception there. This is not even a bring the house situation. I mean, they have a lot of guys around the line of scrimmage, but not all of them came. Abrams drain right now. Eight pass breakups, four ints already on, on the season. Uh, make, just consistently makes plays on the ball. Throwing it away against this team is not a bad thing. All no. The time. Heavy pressure here. Darius Robinson, six. It just says everybody who's in my way is needs to get out of the way. And obviously, South Carolina's offensive line is not good, like not good at all. But if you looked at uh, in terms of pressures, uh, both Robinson and, and obviously they play a lot more snaps, get a lot more opportunities. But Robinson and the Johnny Walker, 15 uh, on the other side, both already at 20 plus pressures, five plus sacks on the season. Again, look at the situation, third and six. They're playing man with, with one guy coming down, and they're bringing people. And that's like you're going to see it. They bring DBs, and they blitz more than anybody in the SEC. And I do think that let's just – if you line up here, if you're an aggressive defensive coordinator, which Missouri has, you're going to want to be testing George's right tackle because – if that's Amarius Mims returning, he hasn't played football in a long time. What can right. you do against him? If that's Xavier Truss, that's not his natural position. What can you do against him? And he still has that ankle injury that he's he's playing through. Uh, or if it's Monroe Freeland, true freshman out there. Yep. So I, I think you're going to want to be testing Georgia at right tackle with that pressure. So I wouldn't be surprised if Georgia tries to get lost in like you're someone else over there to help occasion. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. I think the biggest thing for them is to stay out of third down. I and mean, that's as an offense, that's – almost a goal. It should be a goal, but it's, it's going to be interesting to see because they're, they're going to bring pressure. Like that's what they do. And like you said, sometimes it bites them in the arse, but 
a lot of times it happens. They get home like this against Kentucky again, stopping the run. Yep. And you just look at the push. Like yeah. six, six, I think it was that just shoves the right guard. Six owns the tackle, ninety, I think, or zero. Right they're just they've got they've got the SEC caliber defensive line. But like I said, run defense is not their biggest strength, and they've given up plays to teams and given up bigger plays uh, in terms of run defense. The strength of their team is in premium positions: the two edge defenders, the two corners, Abrams Drain, and then Rakestraw, twelve. One of the things I think we need to mention before we wrap up on Missouri is kicking game. Mevis is a fantastic kicker in terms of strength. Now, he's had some misses. I'm not saying he hasn't, but he won a game with an NFL kick against Kansas State. And so when you start looking at what are the elements of an upset, and Vegas tells you that there's not much danger of that in this game, but a confident quarterback who doesn't make a lot of turnovers and he can run a little bit, skill guys like Burden, like Weiss, a good running game, and then good kicking game as well, defensive line that can cause a little bit of havoc. Like There's a lot of elements there that when when upsets happen, you usually see some of those things. Again, like you say, can Missouri do any of those things for four quarters in a way that stress Georgia, especially on the road? I think that's the big yeah. question. Yeah, I think, and the, Georgia being at home is a humongous deal for this game it, and really the next couple of weeks. But – the question for any of these teams coming up on Georgia's schedule, can they hang around? Can they be not – can they avoid what Florida had? Can they avoid, avoid what the self-destructive plays like Florida and Kentucky? And then Georgia obviously created a lot of the, a lot of those against Florida. But can you avoid that and just play sort of straight-up football? If you avoid that, I think these teams, especially the next two weeks, can – because of the offensive skill set, can kind of stay around and hang in the game and make it a four-quarter game. Overall, just what do you think of Missouri's offensive scheme, the things that Eli Drinkwitz has instilled in that program? There's a lot of old Auburn elements from Gus Malzahn. Like he's he's done some things on a few places, but I, I know there's at least some elements of that. And I, I like it overall just because it's, it's quarterback friendly. It's uh, anything to me that uses pistol outside zone that you can go either way when you don't have a true elite mobile quarterback – it's it sets up well for your offense. It allows play action. It allows you to go right or left, less predictability, the split zone action that they do consistently. There's there's more east west elements, but I think this year they've in, they've minimized some of the east west elements to it and gotten them pushed the ball. And because of Weiss being there, transfer from Oklahoma, like his element has added a lot more north south and vertic- vertical vertical uh, threats to them because like. He, they're going to throw it to Weiss, and he's going to be number one, the guy that dropped the pass in that one. But he's 10 out of 13 in terms of contested catch situations. So they'll, they'll throw it up to him and let him go make plays. That's third best in, in the power five. So like, he can make plays on the ball in one-on-one situations. Well, we appreciate y'all watching this preview of the Missouri Tigers as they get set to play the Georgia Bulldogs. If you like what we do, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and support Breda Pest Management, the official pest control company of the Georgia Bulldogs. They protect Sanford Stadium. They can protect your home, BredaPest.com. Also, thank you to ASW Distillery. They are distilled by dogs, five of the six founders, UGA grads, and they like supporting UGA. And one way that they do that, Hunker Vodka. This needs to be at your tailgate. Every one of these that gets sold, some of the proceeds go to Classic City Collective for Georgia's NIL efforts. And so uh, you want to make sure you have that at your tailgate instead of any other vodka that may start with the letter T and support another university that has the letter T as well. They're coming to the SEC next year. Have I given you enough clues at this point? Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you.